Hi everybody, I hope you're keeping well. I've been having a few issues with the new mount and um, the other night I had some really weird guiding and I took a photo of it here. So I was um, imaging the Cygnus wall and it was going really well. You can see it's not bad guiding at this first half here. And then all of a sudden I was getting these RA and deck um, spikes and they suddenly just dipped straight down and uh, it was after the dither period so I thought it was basically part of dithering but it doesn't seem to be because if you look at this section it's con continued and then it's before a dithering period here um, so it's all a bit weird and um, I actually stopped the mount tracking and then started it again and it seemed to get slightly better so I stopped it at this point here waited a few seconds and restarted it and it seemed to get a bit better then um, but then I had to pack up and br bring them out in but um, I did manage to get some good data I've used them out about six times now and on the whole it's okay I am getting some really um, sort of egg-shaped stars so I need to find out about that but um, I did get some reasonable data the manufacturer has asked me to run the guiding assistant in PhD2 which I did do and I managed to get some good data from that. Currently looking at the guiding assistant in PHD2 and I'm analysing the mount at the moment because I've been having some problems with the guiding on the new mount. Um, I need to let this run for about 15 minutes so that it can allow the worm gears to do two full rotations. So it's just plotting a graph which I have to say looks it looks pretty horrific actually at the moment but I don't I'm not sure if that's good or bad at the moment I, I genuinely don't know so I'm going to let it let it run through and let's see what the results are at the end so from the guiding assistant this was the results here and they're not hugely bad at all there's a little bit of backlash, which it says here, um, 970 milliseconds backlash. But in terms of the RMS, it's really OK. It's not too bad at all. And if you look at the graph, you'll see um, it's not bad. So it's pretty flat going all the way up for the north side. And then that's the backlash that you can see there. But that's not too bad and you could apply that with backlash compensation or I could try and tweak the mount to get rid of that backlash but it's interesting that even on a new mount you get quite a lot of backlash like this um, but I did manage to get some good results and even though over sort of five or six nights I managed to get about seven hours of actual data which is good but because of the problems with the mount when I came to stack it all in Deep Sky Stacker I had to throw away two and a half hours of data because the stars were not sharp enough. Or well, there was another issue, but it's mainly because the stars were just not sharp enough, which left me with about five hours of data. But the data was really good, and I was very pleased with it. This is the folder with all of the files in from the different dates that I managed to image. And what I did is I went into PixInsight and I blinked through all of these, which is a process you can do in PixInsight and it allows you to scroll through very quickly and see all of those uh, files and pick the best ones. 
So I then exported them all into the lights folder. I also took flats, darks and dark flats that we can see here. I didn't use PixInsight for stacking the images. I actually used Deep Sky Stacker because it was just a bit quicker. And also I'm not that familiar with the process in PixInsight and I really need to spend some time and learn how to do it in PixInsight. But the actual stacked image was interesting. So I'll load that here. So that's just loading in PixInsight. So here we have the actual stacked image. I'll do a screen transfer function on this and you'll see what came out from uh, the stacking. So there we go. Um, so first of all, the first thing that you see is that it's on a slant, which is interesting. And also it's green. Now I always, I don't know about this. There's a, there's a little chain here which says that RGB are linked. If I reset the screen transfer function, and unlink them and then do the stretch, you see the image there, which is much better. Now, I don't know if you're meant to do that type of stretch without the linking, or if you should do a stretch with the linking, which gives you a green image. Um, you get rid of the green with SCNR in a minute. Just to show you how I got um, out of this situation with it being green, the first process I used was background neutralization. So I literally took the defaults and I just dragged and dropped that on there. I'll just remove the stretch and then reapply the stretch. And it's corrected that straight away. I then did a color calibration. Again, just using the defaults on this. So I just drag and drop that on there. Okay. That's good. And then clear SCNR and then restretch. And there it is. So it's looking better. And then the last part I did was SCNR, which just removes any excessive green hue from this. The other interesting thing looking at this and how it's been stacked is this quite serious field rotation, which is really odd. And um, I've lost quite a lot of the image that I really wanted, which is a bit of a shame. So what I had to do was go to processes all the way down to dynamic crop. And then you just draw a box on the area you think you're going to need. Pick the box up. And then we need to rotate it. So I'm just going to rotate the box. So it's in roughly the same orientation as the actual image. And then I'm just going to extend these so that we get roughly the same amount of information. So that's roughly how it was cropped. And then you just click OK and it crops the image. So we now have a cropped version of that there. The other thing which is interesting, I've never taken an image with seven hours, or in this case, it was just over five hours worth of stacking. And the data, interestingly, was very, very clean. And I've never known my data to be quite so clean. You can see, even if I zoom in, I mean, I've gone in almost down, well, I'm at pixel level there. But the data is really clean. The other processes which I used on this image um, although that's that's just the raw data that we have there, I was really pleased with how um, how it turned out. But the other processes that I used, first of all, I um, made the stars a little bit smaller by using a star mask. So I created a star mask and also used the um, data here to fill in the shadows and the midtones values. And then after the star mask, I applied that star mask and then used morphological transformation to um, make them a little bit smaller. Um, I then did some form of noise reduction with the multi-scale linear transform. I then applied a TVG denoise to the image. And then after that, I just did a simple um, histogram transformation from this, which is processes, all processes, and then histogram transformation. The data was so clean that I didn't have to do too much to it. So I literally just dragged the screen transfer function to here and then applied that curve to the data. So I just went across 
and applied that curve like that. So that's it now properly stretched and it's exactly the same. Um, and then in curves transformation, that was it. That was absolutely it. All I did was, if I go to preview, so I only stretched a little bit, as you can see, not a huge amount. The final bit which I did, which I've never done before, is I used an LRGB combination here. First of all, I got my, my image as I'd processed it like that and went image, extract, and I split the RG and B channels and the lightness channels. So I ended up with RGB and luminance separately. Then in this tool, you apply those. So you put L, R, G, B in these values here, and then you can increase and decrease the luminance values. And you can see here, so I've got L, R, G, B. I also have another L there, because I was using one as a mask um, at one point. But then you just apply that. and it creates the image that you've just created. But it allows you to play with the lightness and the colour saturation to bring out some of the, the details in the image. And I think it looks really good. Um, and it was, it was really good fun to see that. The final process that I did on the image was just to tweak the colour saturation where you choose the colour you want to tweak. And if I start a preview, and it just increases some of the saturation. So I just brought out some of the red saturation in the image in PixInsight. And that was it. Normally my data is really noisy. And I think this time it's cleaner because of the integration time. Because I took about seven hours of integration time and then stacked all of that and re was really brutal with choosing which frames to actually stack. and. Um, I only stacked about five hours, just over five hours. Uh, the data is really clean and I'm very pleased with that. So the final image after all of this was this one here. And I was quite pleased with this. Uh, I think it, it looks really nice. I'm, I think it's got quite a lot of detail. It's not amazingly well processed because I'm, I'm, I'm not that good at processing. I'm really not. I, I was kind of sat here thinking, I'm just so pleased that the data is this clean and I haven't had to do too much to it. It's quite interesting seeing that the longer the integration time you put in, the less noise you have. Um, and that will only work if you're dithering where the mount moves around. I'd have liked to have had even more if I could have had seven hours if the mount hadn't let me down with the strange shaped stars. That would have been really good and the data would have been really clean. I mean, it's not perfect. It's, it's, it does have noise, but it's much cleaner than I've ever had. I hope that was interesting. I wanted to um, show you a little bit of PixInsight. I'm, I'm hopefully going to do a few more bits in PixInsight. Um, but here's the finished image. This is the Cygnus wall taken from my back garden. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.